Hi, Courtney here to talk to you today about some money saving tips, but also about a philosophy that I read about many, many years ago in a book called Your Money or Your Life. Many of you may have heard of this book. I want to say I read it in the 80s. Um, it's been a while. I was in my 20s and I'm 51 now. At the age of 34, I started teaching this class or facilitating this class called Voluntary Simplicity. And there are some experts, <laughs> experts, excerpts in here from your money or your life. And what it does is it teaches us that we need to look at our earning, saving, and what we need to live a little differently. Now, that book had a little different way of looking at it, but what I gathered from that book is if you can get your expenses low enough, you do not need a, a lot to live on. And if, as you save and have investments or Social Security pension, you'll be a lot better off. I didn't understand like the 4% rule, which says that you need 4% of whatever your investments are. You can draw 4% off those investments in order to uh, not run out of money. I didn't understand that. And I'd be happy to go into that more in another video if you would like to, or you can Google it. It's, I believe it's from the Trinity study. But what I did gather from that is I need to be debt free. I need to get, make my life as inexpensive as possible. It's not right now, <laughs> but it's pretty inexpensive. And I need to save. And so I was a little weary of investments like 401ks and things like that because I really didn't understand them. Even though at the age of 29, my ex-husband and I had uh, that available to us because we both worked at a college and I was a contractor and he was a full-time employee. So we did get the match and that is one thing that we did right and we never touched it. And so we weren't putting in as much as we could have. We had four small children, but we were putting money into it every month. And by the time we got divorced, 11 years later, it was worth about $180,000 and we split that. So I don't have a lot more than, I mean, it's, it's a, it had about doubled with me making some small contributions in the last three years. I um, fully was funding it at $7,000 a year, but it took me a while when I was a single mother. I just couldn't do it. So anyway, getting back to the philosophy, it, it's kind of like this. You, don't, you have to look at money as time, and I know a lot of people talk about this, but if I go to work and I make $100, and that's about what I make when I go to work, I make $100 because I am a, I am a um, yoga therapist. And I have to calculate out of that hundred dollars, there's twenty to thirty dollars in taxes. Okay, I pay self-employment taxes, so it's more like thirty dollars. Then I drove to work. That's ten dollars. So now I'm down from that hundred. I take forty out. So I've made sixty dollars. Let's say that that day I'm really tired. I've commuted thirty to forty-five minutes in traffic. Probably sat in traffic because. It, and of work because of highway construction and I'm really tired and I meet my husband and we go out to eat and we spend another $30. So I'm down now to $30 that I've made. Also, let's say that that day I'm in town and we live in the country. So I go ahead and I go to Walmart to get some groceries or to pick up a few things I need. But because I'm there and I'm tempted by marketing, maybe I go ahead and pick up a little bit more. So let's say that now I'm down, you know, to $15. You have to look at all the things that come along with working that cause you to spend money, taxes, gas, oil changes, um, your clothing, the cost of work, the cost of convenience, and it really does take a toll. And some ways that we've been, I've been realizing that this summer is my husband and I own a roofing business. So my husband has a flexible job in the um, court system. He has to be there at certain times, but he's off. Like he might have a week with no court, and then he'll have th three weeks of four days of court. So he, we own a roofing business, and we kind of schedule that within that. And then he works in the court system. I work as a medical yoga therapist about 16 hours a week, and then we own an Airbnb. So we've been trying to kind of 
back off of some of that, but this year our roofing business has been really busy. And for instance, we had to pay someone to bush hog our farm. And I want to say we probably spent about six to seven hundred dollars getting help this year on bush hogging and mowing. So you have to factor things like that in. You're too busy to do things, so you hire it out. When you have time, you tend to do things ourselves. We're about to hire some painters to come in. A, my husband hates to paint, and I'm not good with painting. I've tried. I'm really terrible at it. I also have neuropathy in my hands, so I can't hold a, hand, a brush very well. But if I were able to paint when I was younger, I did more. Um, that would save us a lot of money. I wanted to share with you a few ways I have saved some money this week. And one of the things that's been going on with my job is we've been really slow lately. And I've been really trying to maximize my time off. Looking through our expenses, looking at our credit card bill, which we pay. We use a credit card for points, pay it every month. And I'm very conscious not to overspend using the card. So I was looking through it the other day. Always look through your spending. I know it can be hard, but it will inform you, okay, am I eating out too much? Where did all this money go? And I saw a charge for Hulu. I thought I had paused Hulu. We've been paying for Hulu. We haven't watched Hulu in months. It's $14.99 a month. So I canceled Hulu because right now we have Netflix and Prime. Um, that saved us $15 a month, which is $180 a year. I did all this in one day. We got Starlink not in one day, and there was an upfront cost. It will pay us back in one year, but that's going to save us $40 a month over the old internet. That saves us $480 a year. It'll take a year to you know break even on the upfront cost. On our little guest house, Airbnb, while I was on the phone canceling the internet for here, I asked them if they had any special offers, and they gave me $20 a month for six months off of the cabin internet. So that saved me $120. And then now that we have Starlink and we have unlimited data, I was able to change our phone service down from the um, $65 a month plan down to the $40 a month plan and if by the, or the $45 a month plan. By the time you took taxes and fees off total, it saved us another $27 a month, which was a total of $324 a year. All of these things because I have had time to work on them. I have had time to think about them. I have had time to investigate them. Saved us $1,104 this year. That is almost like what, $90 a month, almost, a little more than $90 a month. That is significant. And that's just a few things. When you combine things like this every day, it makes a big difference. For instance, nowadays it's hard to find a car wash where you just go through and wash your car with the spray hose. That's about a dollar to a dollar fifty. Here, what I normally do is I drive through one of those fancy car washes where it has the vacuum cleaner, and it's anywhere from eight to twenty dollars a car wash, which I try to do every other week. I like to wash my car every week if it's been really dirty, but I try to at least do that every other week. So we can often still get the same value for less money, but we may have to put a little bit more work into it um, up front. If I were to wash my car at home, I, I already have all the supplies. There was that upfront cost and the minuscule amount of water that I would use to wash my car, and it would do much better. That's practically free. The second one is going to the spray car wash. That's $1.50. The third one is to drive through. The cheapest is $8. And you see how there's a best choice, a better choice, or a, a choice that maybe is more expensive, a better choice, and then a best choice when it comes to finance. But the one that is usually the cheapest is usually the most time intensive, which you don't have if you're working all the time. So I think it's really important that we think about our time when we're going to spend things. Or I've been thinking about this a lot because my job is kind of slowing down. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to still be there in a year. There's just some things happening. And I'm, I have now gone on as full-time office manager for our roofing business and I put myself on payroll, which doesn't really mean the company's making more money. It's just a way of um, including me for social security. So 
I'm really looking at just going to work for our business and keeping our Airbnb, and my husband's going to be retiring from the court in a year. So I've been thinking about these things a lot, like how much are we actually spending because we work all the time? How much could we save if we didn't work all the time? Today, we did go to a movie and we went out to eat, and I will say we went to a matinee. It was $11 and like 19 cents for the matinee. We do that a lot because it's not crowded and um, don't like to be in crowds right now. Then there is a place called Tacos for Life, which is kind of like a Panera bread for Mexican food. Um, it's about $29 to eat there versus the another restaurant in town, which the same kind of Mexican bowl with all the sides the other day, I went and got two meals, and it was $56. So, again, there is a choice that is the cheapest, eating at home and watching a movie at home. There is a choice that's a good choice, more expensive, $41. I actually left a $5 tip on the table. But let's say $45, or you go to the evening movie and out to the more expensive restaurant, and you're talking anywhere from $70 to $100 if you got snacks and things like that. So just be thinking, what's the least expensive choice? Is there a choice that's in the middle that I'm still gonna enjoy myself, but I'm not gonna have to go out and spend double the amount of money? I hope this has been helpful. I think about these things all the time. If you haven't read Your Money or Your Life, I highly recommend it. And if you find a voluntary simplicity course in your area, I facilitated these gosh, up until the pandemic, from the age of 34 to about the age of 49, I facilitated these. And I'll probably do it again. I love this course so much. If you don't have one in your area, you can call the Northwest Earth Institute and volunteer to be a facilitator. I offer them at the library usually, and it's really great. I love it. All they have to do is buy the cost of the book. And in our case, the library actually paid for the books. I think they're about 20 bucks. So have a wonderful day and please like and subscribe if you enjoy this material. Thank you.